the United States Department of Energy has the statutory responsibility to design, develop, test, and retire the nuclear weapons used in our nation's defense. As the United States meets treaty obligations by making significant reductions in its nuclear weapon stockpile, the U.S. Department of Energy has developed additional capability to disassemble and dispose of the weapons returned from the Department of Defense. The principal disassembly and disposal operations are taking place at the Department of Energy's Pentex plant near Amarillo, Texas, under the highest levels of safety and security. Most of the weapons were originally assembled at the Pentex plant. The weapons being returned from the Army, Navy, and Air Force vary widely in their design and use of materials. A variety of methods are required to disassemble the weapons and to dispose of the resulting materials in the manner that will protect the health and safety of the public and Pantex employees and meet all requirements for protecting the environment. Nuclear bombs and most nuclear artillery shells are returned intact to Pantex. Only the warhead is returned from Army, Air Force, and Navy missiles. The launch vehicles are disposed of by the Department of Defense at other locations. When Department of Defense units have identified the weapons that are to be returned to the Department of Energy, they are shipped from a military base in the United States. The weapons are transported in heavily armored trucks and trailers operated by armed couriers, who are DOE employees. Each convoy includes escort vehicles driven by additional couriers. Special communication equipment enables a central control center to track the exact location of each convoy as it rolls toward the Pantex plant. Within 72 hours after arrival at Pantex, each weapon is subjected to a series of safety and security inspections before the approved disassembly procedure can be started. The disassembly of nuclear weapons is a very exacting procedure and is conducted in a controlled environment under strict supervision. The time required to disassemble a weapon ranges from five days to three weeks depending on the type of weapon. For bombs such as the B-61, disassembly requires the removal of four major subassemblies. The first section to be removed is the radar nose subassembly. This section will be sent to DOE's Kansas City plant for further disposition. The second major disassembly operation is removal of the center bomb sub-assembly. Various non-nuclear components are removed during this operation to allow access and removal of the nuclear packages. Once removed, the nuclear components are taken to a heavily reinforced facility known as a gravel gertie for disassembly. In the unlikely event of the detonation of the conventional high explosives in the weapon, a gravel gertie is designed to minimize the blast effects and the release of radioactive materials into the environment. It is virtually impossible for an accident to result in a nuclear detonation. The next major operation is removal of the pre-flight selection bomb subassembly. This unit contains the controlled equipment used to prepare the weapon for a mission. At this point, only the tail bomb subassembly remains to be removed. The tail section contains the parachute and its deployment system. The B-61 bomb contains almost 6,000 parts, all of which must be taken apart, cataloged, and segregated for proper disposition or disposal. All nuclear weapons undergo the same procedure during disassembly. When the nuclear package is delivered to a gravel gurney, it consists of an exterior casing or shell containing the primary nuclear assembly and, in many cases, a secondary nuclear assembly if the weapon is a hydrogen bomb or warhead. 
The primary nuclear assembly consists of the pit, surrounded by conventional high explosives and a firing system. The pit is a shell made of non-radioactive material. It contains plutonium, which is the radioactive material used to produce the nuclear detonation. The first disassembly procedure is to remove the metal exterior shell. As the primary is removed from the nuclear package, the high explosive detonators are removed and packaged for disposition. Removal of the high explosive material from the pit exterior can take from minutes to days, depending on the removal process, which in turn depends on the type of high explosive and the method used to mate the high explosive to the pit. Once separated from the high explosive, the pit is placed in a container and returned to a staging area. If the weapon contains a secondary nuclear assembly package, it is not disassembled at Pantex. The secondary is placed in a specially designed container that meets Department of Transportation standards and is eventually sent to the Y-12 plant in Tennessee for temporary storage or disassembly and disposal. Health and safety protection have always been primary concerns during the disassembly of nuclear weapons. Over the years, much knowledge has been gained on the potential health effects of exposure to radiation. Pantex workers now work under stringent regulations, which limit exposure to levels well below current standards. There also has been a lowering of exposure to non-nuclear hazardous materials in components of nuclear weapons. As the nuclear weapons are disassembled, the components are segregated into groups, which are disposed of in different ways to protect both classified information and the environment. Non-nuclear components are segregated into appropriate groups at the disposal staging area. Several disposal methods are used for material generated from the disassembly of a nuclear weapon. These disposal methods include the transportation of the radioactive components to Department of Energy Weapons Complex facilities. Some components may be reused and are stored at various DOE facilities. The final disposition of all radioactive and non-radioactive materials and components is done in a manner which meets all current classification and environmental regulations. Much of this material is similar to waste materials generated by other industrial operations. Protection of classified information requires that many components be disfigured into a shape which does not disclose the original configuration of the part. Hazardous material waste disposal regulations affect the methods used to process materials, such as burning the conventional high explosives, the manner in which materials are packaged and transported, and the location of the disposal site where those materials may be taken. All federal and state regulations relating to the disposal of all forms of waste must be followed. Gold and other precious metals are recovered from a number of components and carefully accounted for. The U.S. Department of Energy has disassembled thousands of nuclear weapons over the years in a safe, secure, and efficient manner. That same commitment to quality performance will be achieved in meeting the requirements in all our nation's arms reduction programs.